Episode 2, Near and Far Distance Viewing with the IPE VO VZ-X Document Camera. Presented by Oscar Tu, Business Development Specialist at IPE VO. Video editing by Karen Tabayoyong, VI Program Student Assistant. We are now recording. Okay, so um, welcome to our second Tech Talk, you guys. Tonight we have IPEVO, I-P-E-V-O, um, and Oscar is the I uh, U.S. IPEVO rep, and he's here to demonstrate, to actually tell us about, introduce, and demo uh, what the IPEVO products are and what they can do in terms of supporting um, access to classroom information for our low vision students. So take it away, Oscar. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Um, so my name's Oscar. Um, I work for a company, IPVO, and basically we're a company that create, um, makes ed tech hardware and um, software, of course. And our main product is a, is a dot cam, and um, it looks something like this. This is, uh, got terrible lighting, but um, I'll have, I'll have a better definition picture in my PowerPoint, but this is roughly what it looks like. Um, this is a wireless model. And um, yeah, let me just put you guys up for the PowerPoint. Hold on. Um, yeah, you guys might need to um, bear with me. It's my first time presenting on Zoom, a bit nervous. Um, Um, so yeah, anyways, um, this, we have three of our main document camera products. This one's the V4K. It's the, um, most basic of the line and, um, it only offers USB output and, um, next one, this is, um, VZR, um, the, the middle of the line in our product line and Basically, what differentiates this one with the previous ones is that if you can see on the picture, um, there are tactile buttons. And um, we've, actually, we've actually modified them so that um, they are a lot more accessible to those that are visually impaired. They have, um, they have indents, some buttons are concave and convex. So um, just by feeling them, you'll be able to know off by um, heart or just by feel what they do. For example, the zoom buttons, um, one's concave, one's convex. So you can just basically feel them and know what um, each button's function is. Um, this is the VZX. It is the, um, the, wireless, the wireless edition of our um, prep line. And the only difference between this one and the VZR, the last one, is that this one has wireless capabilities. Um, you can connect that into a laptop, to a tablet, to your phone even. And yeah, um, I'll, now I'll show you guys the text specifications. So basically, um, all, all of them have the same, the same camera. All of them are eight megapixels. Um, 30, 30 FPS, and um, you can you can see the weights. Um, they're quite light actually, and they do up to twelve times of digital zoom. Um, the outputs: the V4K offers um, USB, VZR offers USB HDMI, the VZX offers um, all the above and Wi-Fi. And as for compatibility, um, our, we have a software called the Visualizer. And um, basically, that is installable on all of the mainstream platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Chromebook, um, iOS, Android, even Apple TV. And um, the hardware itself, the V4 currently offers USB, so that plugs in, um, plugs in systems that have USB ports. Um, VZR has extra HDMI, so you can plug that directly to a monitor, a projector, or um, hmm, I think that's it, yeah. 
Uh, well, anything that has a HDMI port that can um, receive output signals. And obviously, with VZX, as I um, explained before, there's um, the Wi Fi capability. And um, yeah, the VZX, since it's wireless, it has a ch um, chargeable battery that lasts up to nine to 12 hours. So um, yeah, plenty of time. And you can, you can see the price for them below. Um, starting at 99 and the, the most expensive going up to 299 And um, these were the tactile buttons I was talking about before. As you can see, um, there's a note, each button is, um, is dis um, distinguishable from each other. You have um, these little bumps in like rotate, um, the light button, there's, um, it's a bit, um, it's not, it's not smooth. Um, the zoom in, zoom out, concave, convex, and yeah. So, um, regarding the buttons, the, there's a light built in that's directly next to the camera. So, um, if your lighting is bad or you just need to build extra light, there's light. Um, there's a field button. I'm going to go more into detail about that in a sec. So basically, um, our software also offers a wide array of, um, different filters that can be used for a lot of different purposes. A lot of um, low vision, visually impaired um, people have, have complimented how um, they, they find it really useful, su such as black on white, inverted black on white, um, yellow on blue, I believe, sepia, and um, yeah, I'll go into more than in a sec. And obviously, zoom in, zoom out, the key functions of the document camera, um, up to 12, 12 times digital zoom. You can play around with the exposure, make, um, make your pages brighter, make it dimmer. And obviously, yeah, the focus button and a power switch. On the wireless model, there's an additional snapshot button that you could capture the, screen, the current um, screen with. And yeah, I'm going to go more into that in a sec with a live demonstration. And here's just a short video, 30 second video of using, using the thing with a microscope. Here. Yeah, it's one of the um, one of the functions, yeah. or I mean, one of the things you could do with a document camera. And um, here are some pictures I found um, of a a TVI, I believe, um, tweeting out um, how some students use their um, their document cameras. Um, I think the question, the student in the picture is um, also a low vision student that uses a document camera that's set up pointing towards the projector, um, actually, I think it's a smart board. Um, yeah, pointing towards the smart board and um, yeah, watching the movie along with the class on their tablet. And um, here's another photo of um, a student that's using using document camera to um, to read a book, to um, enlarge and um, zoom in onto the book and read it via his laptop. Oops. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go into a live demonstration right now. You'll bear with me while I figure out how to change over. Give me one second. Um, whoops. Oh, here we go. So, um, this is Visualizer, our, um, our software that goes along with the, um, doc, doc cam itself. And, um, all of our software 
are free to download, free to use. And uh, yeah, um, here I have a um, final exam from years ago. And um, yeah, so this is roughly what you'll be getting in terms of um, image quality. Um, frame rate, you can see my hand, it's quite smooth. And obviously autofocuses. And um, here, I'll just try writing something. Yeah, part of my handwriting, but um, yeah. Um, obviously, you have the zoom function right here, up to 12 times. And now, um, you can rotate 360 degrees how you want it. And um, resolution, exposure. Um, white balance and here here was the filters um, function I was telling you guys about um, so one of the main ones black and white refocus it you have a uh, inverted black and white grayscale white and blue everything and here's one of well not one of my favorite function is the reading line the reading aid line. Um, basically, have you, um, when you project worksheets or passages reading to classes, um, a lot of students tend to get lost. They might doze off for a few seconds and then suddenly they don't know where to teach it, um, reading. So with the line, you're able to navigate as you, um, as you go along with your passage or worksheet and it's What's cool is you can also left click and you can magnify a specific passage, I mean, or a specific area. And um, I've received a lot of feedback from, from visually impaired users saying that um, they really like this function and it was a huge help to them. And um, down at the bottom, you have, um, you, can, you can turn on the lights from here like this. And obviously, there's a switch on the on the hardware itself. There's a free screen if you ever need it. Um, and another cool addition, and this is geared um, specifically for visually impaired, is up here. You'll see um, a little little icon that says mode. And basically, what this does is that you can switch between. This is the regular user interface for the software, and if you click on mode, um, let me see this real quick. It will alternate into an interface that's specifically designed for the visually impaired with larger icons, so that's it's a lot more um, easy to see. And also, in this particular user interface, the reading aid also gains a highlighting line. Oops. So, um, just want to show you guys um, with the wireless model how it's set up, how it's done. Just go back to my. Let's go to my. Can you see me? Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, let me just get a torch from my phone. So you can probably see this better. Um, okay, that's terrible. Anyways, there's a um, series of buttons. Why well, not series of buttons? Um, inputs from HDMI, um, USB. And there's also a switch right here that lets you um, change interchange between the two um, modes, HDMI, USB, and Wi-Fi. So basically, how Wi-Fi works is the um, dockam it creates its own hotspot that you can connect to through your tablet, your, um, your uh, laptop, your phone, anything. 
So iPad right here. Go into um, Wi-Fi and you find, oh wait, let me turn it on. One just like the um just like the device from the Wi-Fi section. I know if you can see it's I think it's the glare is a bit bad, but um Basically, it's the name of the device, and then once you're connected to it, you you are able to just use it like anything. So um, let's see, you can see this is. Let me just try. Whoops, my uh, laptop screen. Let's see, um, if you're right there, document. So what a lot of the teachers do um, is they go around with the, um, the wireless model and they they have they have the wireless model connected to their laptops their tablet and then the tablet is further then hooked up to the projector which projects um projects the image in front of the whole class they um they direct the document camera onto their worksheets and they display it for a whole class to see so um Let's say for English reading, um, if the teacher asks ask students to annotate, um, they can just directly show the annotations on the screen without having students come around and um, you know going up to the desk, putting under the old-fashioned projectors, and um, yeah, that's just one of the, the uses. And obviously, just like before, there was the um, the microscope. Um, let's see. Does anyone have any uh, questions so far on um, anything, any of the, the functions of the software or the hardware itself? This is Kayla. I have a question. Oops. Um, yeah, sure. When would some, or why would someone choose this over something like a Mac Connect or um, an, a, di an, a different kind of document magnifier? Good question. So basically, um, what our product offers, one is um, portability. A lot of the um, document cameras on the market are really bulky and um, frankly, they're not really suited to be moved around. You can't really, um, they're not really portable and you can't fit them in packs. Um, they're quite heavy. And another, another reason is affordability. Um, we know that a lot of, a lot of visual aids um, are really expensive and not everyone can be affording four digit machines to carry around. And yeah, so basically we try to offer um, competitive, compatible specs for a lot lower price. And, um, we have geared a lot of our functions, um, not just software, but also hardware, um, from let's say the tactile buttons. Um, a lot of them were, were designed with the visually impaired in mind and, um, software wise, you have the reading aid. And you also have the um, the low vision mode with everything enlarged, and also filters so that um, different people with different needs can um, read the documents better.
Thank you. Anyone have any other questions regarding to uh, anything, anything that I just said in the past 10 minutes or something? Okay. Yeah, definitely um, just let me know. Um, you, could, you can write in the chat if, um, if you don't get anything or you can just wait till the Q&A at the end of the presentation and I can answer them all then. Um, so anyways, um, back, in, back in topic. Um, one, one of the main, main functions that, um, so a lot, of, a lot of classrooms in the US these days are using doc, document cameras. But um, currently, a lot of them still cost well over four hundred dollars. Um, and as as I previously mentioned, a lot of them aren't very portable. They're um, large, they're bulky, and um, they weigh a lot. So for our our product, we we wanted to to make it so that. Obviously, it's portable. It's affordable, and um, for for students or just visually impaired um, users to have an overall better experience with it. And um, yeah, we have we're still trying. We're still trying to to optimize our um, our products, where it be hardware or software, to um, to be better suited for for the visually impaired users um we're currently working on ocr text text to speech function and um yeah that's some current makings excited about that um yeah um let's go back to the powerpoint we're using this with a projector and an individual device in the individual zoom without affecting the zoom of what's being projected. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to understand your question. Are you saying that, um, what do you mean by individual device? So I think you said that uh, you can hook it up to a projector and yeah. it's like a tablet or a Chromebook. Yeah. Uh, so if the student wanted to enlarge what was being shown under the document camera would that affect okay. what is being projected okay so um a good a decent way to go about this is um the freeze function that i previously mentioned you're able to freeze the screen um the current the current industry and projected and then zoom in on it without um having that affect what's being projected on the screen Does that answer your question or was it, were we looking for something else? Yeah, that answered the question. I, I was hoping it'd be independent, but it sounds like the, the device controls the zoom of the Thypevo, the camera, correct? So what happens is if you directly hook it up to a um, projector for HDMI, um, obviously, since you're not going through a operating system like the Windows or Mac or even um, iOS or anything, um, your own, the only functions that are available through the projector via HDMI are the ones that, um, that are available through the buttons, the tactile buttons on the, um, of the hardware. So, um, if, however, if it was like, um, hooked to a computer, which was then for hooked to a um, projector, then um, it, I guess it would be possible, but um, yes, the zoom, the zoom, the whole um, image is still controlled by the document camera itself. So this is Ting. Um, maybe if I could ask a follow-up question to Justin's question is, sure. Like, for example, if the document camera is on Wi-Fi mode, okay. the teacher has the document connected to the teacher computer, which is projecting to the, the classroom projection screen, okay. could, could a student also be connected through Wi-Fi to the document camera, but then on the student's device, 
through the Visualizer app, be able to zoom up on the image? Um, so with, with the Wi-Fi function, that is indeed possible, but um, you have to keep it in mind that um, it might be fine for a few, but as, as there are more and more connections, say if you were to say, let's say five or like 10, if 10 students connected to the Wi-Fi, um, obviously the device wasn't created with the intention of being that, that gigantic um, router hotspot. Um, obviously there's gonna, there's gonna be some, some loss in, in the data that's um, transferred through the Wi-Fi. So um, what's gonna happen is um, there's possibly gonna be a drop in frame rate, maybe um, some, some of the images don't go as smooth, but it is possible for um, multiple devices to be connected to the Wi-Fi and be viewing the same um, image. And um, from what I know, you are able to um, zoom in, zoom out, change contrast to your liking without it affecting the main, um, the main um, control computer or the software, yeah. So then essentially the teacher could still be going, showing and going through the document with the class on the class projection screen, but the low vision student would have the ability to further zoom in on his or her own personal device. Correct. Um, and that's where, that's one of the good, good things about the freeze function. You're able to freeze, you're able to freeze it on your own screen and um, zoom in, zoom out, um, do whatever you need to do while the teacher is still going on with the class. And um, yeah, you're, you won't be you won't be affecting the class at all. Um, you can you can just do it at your own pace. Obviously, um, once you un unfreeze it, it'll catch up back to um, what the teacher is currently showing. But yes, it is possible um, via the Wi-Fi mode. Yeah. So um, where was I? I think that's um, basically it, actually. Um, oh, right, there was another function I forgot to show. Just go back to the visualizer real quick. Um, get this out of the way. So um, there's some functions right here. There's um, obviously there's the magnifier. I think that's why I'm probably the most important functions. Um, this this was the magnifier that you guys saw in the reading aid function. Um, I think it's really helpful, just for anyone really, not just um, the visually impaired, because some like I I don't like having to zoom in a, a lot and um, or even just press my face against the um, computer monitor because of some. Sometimes they're just really fine print and I can't read them and this helps a lot. And um, there's a lot of different functions. Some you can have fun with, snapshot, video, slow motion, time lapse, reading QR code, and even stop motion and a scanner. So there is a lot of different functions that are available through the app that um, you can play around with. You can um, People that that are into arts and crafts, a lot of them use our products to um, record, to record the progress, or um, you know, even record videos for YouTube, or even create videos. So, um, go back to the PowerPoint. Oops. Cool. Yes, sir. I'm definitely my first time presenting on Zoom. I, um, oops. You're doing great so far. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, on our website, there is a, um, this, is our web, this is our website, um, social media and um, YouTube channel. So basically on our website, you're able to find more the um, more in-depth 
explanations for each function. And there's also, we've, um, a creative team also created videos showing um, fun things you could do with, with all the functions. And um, just even some, some ways you could um, incorporate into your classroom teaching. And um, yeah, basically anything you need to know about any of our products, you'll definitely be able to find on our homepage. Um, yeah, I guess it's Q&A time. Hi Oscar, this is Max. I actually have a question about the scan feature. Uh, what file formats are supported? So does it export as like a PDF, a JPEG, a ping? Um, I believe it can export in both JPEG and um, PDF. Let me just check real quick. In the meantime, while Oscar is checking, I wanted to share with you guys this one workflow that I've been experimenting with my students. So what I found in the classroom was when students need to access the board or when they need to be you know, filling out a worksheet or taking notes while the teacher's presenting, it's actually really helpful for them to be screen sharing with an iPad set up on some sort of, you know, if they've got a keyboard case, the iPad is propped up naturally as an easel. So then they're actually using the iPad or like a tablet device as a screen sharing viewing device while they can be working on their laptop or Chromebook at the same time. So I found that it's really helpful to have two devices actually. One is the student's primary computing device for taking notes, filling in the worksheets, actually doing the work, and then a secondary device such as a tablet, um, like an iPad, to just be screen sharing because otherwise if you think about like the usability wise if if the students running the visualizer app and having to take notes or fill out a worksheet at the same time right. then they have to you deal with like having to do like a split screen kind of viewing and have um, you know two different programs open side by side on the same computer screen which then of course makes the viewing real estate 50% um, smaller right um, so that's why I found it really helpful to have that secondary device for a lot of the uh, low vision students. And then that secondary device can also be a, a more mobile and portable like reading tool as well. So, so um, I just got clarification. The initial um, save file is in JPEG format, but you can also export it as a PDF format. Snapshot um, is a J JPEG format, but if you're going via the scan document, um, feature, it will be able to export it as a PDF. So um, if you go back to, um, I can show you real quick. Um, where is the app? Oh, there it is. So um, this is the shot, this is the snapshot feature, and this one over here, this is the scan document feature. So um, if it's just a snapshot, you're only able to get JPEGs out of it. But um, if you go via the scan document, you're able to export as a PDF as well. Did you guys hear that? Because I think my internet's kind of uh, breaking up a bit. I got it, thank you. Okay. Because my, my end just lagged a bit. I didn't know you guys caught it or not. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Do my best to answer them. Oh, there's a question in the chat box from Dustin. He's, he's asking, can you demonstrate the auto page detection, text to speech and scan document features? So would it be possible to actually show us how those features work? The, um, the scan document? Sure, let me do that real quick. Um, yeah, I was looking for the chat box. Um, hold on. So for this, I'll do the scan document first. Um, scan document, it works as you take a snapshot. Right. And then, 
your A wooden to set the field in which you want to scan. So yeah, you can basically drag your, your um drag it yourself. And um obviously you can export as PDF and um you can change the aspect ratio right here. All these choices. Yeah, if you um go into it, it wouldn't cool. Um let me just show you this. I'll do it with something a bit clearer. This is my business card. It's the most handy thing I had. In. You can adjust it like this. Um, one second. Yeah, you press it and automatically it goes to, um, you can um, save your file to the selected destination. Um, let's do this real quick. Let me just open up the scan image so you guys can see. Um, let's see, where is it? No, it's probably not. Hmm. Trying to find a uh, darker background so I can differentiate it. Um, it's probably good. A terrible lighting. Oscar, is it possible to turn on the feature where you can use the move the dots to adjust the, the board? Yeah, um, I was trying to do the auto detect version, oh. but um, yeah, my lighting is kind of bad. Move dots right here. Save as PDF. And here, let me open it real quick. Oops. Oh, I lost track of where I saved it. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, how do I share this? Yeah. 
You might need to stop the screen share and then reshare your desktop. Oh, what's, um, what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to find the file? No, I um, found the file. I was just trying to move it to PDF. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, my lighting's a bit bad. Um, probably um, just the um, exposure. Oh, yeah, that's probably a lot better. Actually, um, what, what is appearing on your screens? Is it the visualizer or is it the PDF? I think we're seeing the PDF, actually. Yeah. Oh. Um, whoops. Let me just... So um, let me put it back to the screen. See. Yeah, so basically, this is um, how it is with the the um the moving the dots um with the auto detect lighting's just a bit terrible today and um yeah guess I can't pick up the lighting but shot yeah the text to speech is actually currently still in um beta so um let's see Yeah, the um the text to speech is still is is built in, but um it's currently still in the beta stages, and um with the with the scan function, um it'll the the thing would probably work better with um a contrasted color, but um yeah, unfortunately my lighting in the room is really terrible, <laughs> so unfortunately I can't demonstrate it right now. Um, the text to speech will be added. It's in the visualizer. The device itself, um, the functions you can access from the device itself are the ones that have the buttons. So, um, the light, the filters, the rotation, zoom in, um, exposure, and the focus. Most of the, um, the functions that, that are for the visually impaired can be accessed through the visualizer itself. Um, yeah, reading aids, um, honestly, anything can be accessed from the visualizer itself, but, um, the buttons are just for, um, convenience since some teachers don't like to be running back between, um, their device and, um, computer and with the wireless version, if you can just, you can just press the buttons and you wouldn't have to worry about you know, running back every time to adjust the zoom or contrast or anything. Yeah, the text to speech currently is a um, is a big hurdle because um, from what what I've researched and what from what I know, the um, the current OCR, the mainstream OCR softwares. Um, a lot of them are the, the good ones at least 
usually require a really, really pricey subscription fee or, or one-time purchase. And um, yeah, we're in, in currently still trying to develop and match, match it. Um, would the student be able to take a screen, a screenshot of an image? Um, yeah, as long as it's a, um, as long as it's an image that um, it's captured by the um, doc cam, yeah, you're you're definitely able to. Um, there's the snapshot, the snapshot button on the visualizer, and for the wireless version, there's also a snapshot button on the um, on the machine itself. Um, any other questions, you guys? Yeah, any other questions? Okay, so Oscar, thank you for sharing the contact. Uh, we, I think you shared your Twitter, the Twitter account, um, the website. And then do you guys have a YouTube channel as well in case people- Yeah, um, our YouTube channel is IPVO Inc. I-P-E-V-O-I-N-C. Um, you, can, you can find all the videos um, of demos, um, some fun functions you can, you can do the, the software and the hardware. And yeah, and a lot of different things. And if you, if you look on Twitter, you'll see um, we're actively attending um, Tech at um, ed tech exhibitions or just um, yeah exhibitions are the place. We're actually currently in a um, exhibition in Orlando, I believe, starting from tomorrow. So um, yeah, sometimes we do events, giveaways um, for holiday seasons, oh. and um, yeah. Okay, and uh, I know some of us might be attending the upcoming CTE BVI conference. Uh, will you guys be there? Um, the one that's in April? Uh, yes, in Burlingame. Yes, we will. Okay, great. So that'll be nice for anybody who's around who's going to that conference to get an in-person demo and hands-on play with uh, the device as well. And also our SF State program does own a few of these devices. So if anybody wanted to play with one or borrow it for a while as a loaner, if you're evaluating different types of tools for your students, uh, just let me know and I can, I can always give you guys a loaner. Okay. And um, regarding the best in tech in LA at the uh, Braille Institute, um, currently not yet, but we will look into it. And um, I will, I'll let Ting know um, if we do, if we do end up attending the event and yeah, hopefully we can see you guys at future events. If, if you are at any of the events and you see us, feel free to drop by, say hi. Um, I'll, I'll probably most, I'll most likely be there. So yeah, feel free to drop, drop past and, um, yeah, say hi. And I can guarantee you guys, I'll definitely have bare lighting at the time. All right. And actually that's a good, uh, use case for us to, you know, remind our students with because lighting is always one of the biggest enemies and helping our students understand the importance of good lighting for multiple reasons for themselves, but also in using their assistive technology. So um, that was a really good uh, example, even though you we were probably sweating a little bit as a tech demo. Yeah, um, I, only, I only just moved into this place um, not, not um, long ago. So um, I only have one light that's like right there. And um, apparently it's not cutting it. No worries at all. Um, and actually there's one last question from Cindy. Is there a good case for students that transport it from class to class? So is there a case available? Um, Currently, we don't have a case. Um, we don't have a case that um, we make. You might you might be able to find something on Amazon that fits it, but no, we don't have a specifically designed case. But um, honestly, you can just use the box that um, the the doc um, came in. A lot of teachers like to use the box um, to transport it because you know it has all the it has a handle as well, so it's you can easily carry it by just lifting it as well um, from the original box. And um, obviously there are, um, actually I have the box right next to me. Let me show you real quick. Um, 
looks like this. Hold on. Looks like this, and um, just handle right here. And actually, even more slim, like what I do is um, I have the students just stick it upside down into their backpacks. So basically, it gets sandwiched by books and binders. And yeah, honestly, um, right look at it. Um, this arm is fully flexible, foldable, folds up into something like this. And you can honestly, you can just jam it into your backpack. Um, cameras, cameras right here. So it would be facing inside. So you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be, be worrying if you scratch the um, lens or anything. And um, the product itself is made by um, reinforced fiberglass. So it's pretty durable. Oh, I forgot to switch my webcam. Um, how do I? Let me, let me show you again. Okay, that was that was, a, um, that was a mistake. Anyways, um, this is the box I was talking about. This is the one for VCR. Um, there is a handle right here. Um, you can lift it with. It's quite convenient. And if if you look at it, um, hand is fully flexible, foldable. You can fold it in different angles, fold it up, and just basically you can just stick it in your bag. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about like damaging it and unless you're throwing it around like um, like kids would be in the playground. But um, as long as you just carry it normally, I don't think there would be much um, much trouble with damaging it. So yeah. Um, It looks different than the one my students came in. Um, which do you know which model your student has? Um, the VZX has a larger case. Um, it looks like this, and the handles up here. Is, is this what your student has? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the one for the wireless model because um, the wireless model does have a um, bigger base, a thicker base right here. Um, this is the battery. So um, as compared to the VZ, the VZX, VZR, I mean, um, which is obviously just the base itself, but this one has a battery. So um, yeah, extra measures were um, were put into place for the VZX packaging so that um, the battery's kept safe. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to, um, you can email us. You can find our um, customer service line, um, email I mean, in the, in, on our website. And yeah, you can also shoot us, shoot us questions on Twitter, Instagram, and basically any, any type of um, way you can contact us. We'll find a way to get back to you. Thank you so much, Oscar. This was great. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you for having us. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you guys all for attending. Aww. Great to have you. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for joining for our Tech Talk with IPVO. Um, hope it was helpful, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Good night, everybody. See you, everyone. Bye.